Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 46. TidyX is a screencast where I go through and explain how R code works. My name is Ellis Hughes and you can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward and you can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick and you can find Tidy Explained on Twitter at, at Tidy ex underscore Explained or you can email us at tidy.explained at gmail.com or comment on the YouTube link. All right, or or yeah, do all all the above, please. We love hearing from at the you. same time. At the yeah. same time. Yeah. All right. So the 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 data set this week that we're going to be looking at. All right. So we've got a, a great example of some R code that we're going to be going through, and it's based on the Tidy Tuesday data set from this week. is from the R Kenya Census R package, which is available on GitHub. Um, so we're gonna hop over to the code itself, or the actually submission. I can. My brain is a little scattered right now. I'm sorry. Not enough coffee. Too not early in enough, the morning. Not enough coffee. Um, yeah. And it was our studio conf this week, which was awesome. Thank you to our studio and everybody that put that together and all the all the speakers. But getting back to what we were talking about, this submission uh, for this week's Tidy Tuesday, we thought was pretty darn sweet. Um, I had seen some circle packing plots in the past, um, and this this one I think just caught my eye. I, I, I was pretty excited when I saw this. I mean, I think the the viz itself, I think that the circle packing is pretty interesting. She added some context around it. Um, I don't know, I just had had a good time looking at this and seeing seeing what was here. What do you think? Yeah, that? yeah, pretty cool. Uh, cool way to visualize the data and give it some context. I guess in, in getting through the code, I didn't realize this was uh, a sort of permutation of a network graph. Like normally we do network graph with lines connecting things. And um, I think once we step through it, it was like, oh, this is a, it's a network graph. It's just done as circles. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So this was uh, created by Natalie O'Shea. So we reached out to her like, hey, Natalie, uh, would you mind if we actually you can see the comment here? Yeah. Um, if we went and talked through your, your, uh, your code, she said, no problem. Her code is on GitHub. So you can find it here, Natalie O'Shea Tidy Tuesday, which we've pulled down into our, our studio session. So we're gonna go through and explain how her code works. Yay, here we go. All right, thank you so much, Natalie, for allowing us to do this. All right, so first, uh, the first thing she does is load her library. She's got Tidyverse and Network D3, which is used for um, the uh, plotting purposes. We added iGraph and GGRAF, I think that was uh, two libraries that were intended to be up here, but they were missed, which is all good. All right, so now we're going to load in the data. So this, it, the the package is available on GitHub, the Arkenia census. So your remotes install underscore GitHub, shell myth. I'm sorry, uh, ka, karu, Karyuki. 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 Uh, Arkenia census. I am so sorry about that. Um, and rather than loading the package itself, because it's a, a data object, what you can do is you can do the Arcania census colon colon, the actual data you want to be pulling out of this. So if you want to learn more about data that lives inside of an R package, you do question mark, package name, colon colon, the data you're trying to pull out. So like ggplot, you could do ggplot2 colon colon diamonds and with a question mark in front of it, and it'll bring up this like data dictionary or help page explaining what is in the data and how to access it. So it has three columns, ethnicity slash nationality, which is the ethnicity slash nationality, subgroup and total population. And this is the distribution of population by ethnicity and nationality. So this is cool. So um, Natalie reads it in, renames the fields to make it easier for her to use. So she renames the ethnicity slash nationality uh, field into ethnicity. Uh, subgroup, uh, all caps into lowercase, as well as total into lowercase. And then does some mutations to add some new new stuff. So adds the column name and sets it all be NA. Then converts the ethnicity field to be all lowercase, as well as the subgroup. And I'm imagining this is just for consistency and making it easier to do uh, string manipulation in the future. So we're going to run that. Now we've got our demographics data set here where we've got, let's just do a head. <clears throat> Ethnicity, subgroup, which in this case is all NA in the, the head that we've done here, total population and name. 
So now we're going to go through and slice it up, slice and dice for uh, doing separate manipulations through. So the totals, so the totals are the, the way this, I'm assuming this was a table inside of a uh, PDF or something like that. And the way that tables can often be shared is they'll have summary statistics of like, oh, total population is at the very top. And then if you go down further into the table, it has more descriptions and more details about it. Um, and so this, it, it seems like this is the way that this data set was formatted as well. So it uses the slice function, which you can say, okay, slice off this, these rows for, my, for me to use. And so she's pulling off the first four rows here and saving that as the totals data set, pulling off columns or rows six through 133 uh, as Kenyans uh, data set and 135 through 148 as non-Kenyans. So we've got three different data sets now that have total summary population, Kenyan population, and non-Kenyan population data sets that we're now going to be going through and handling. Pat, you want to maybe take us through? Uh, yeah. Things? So in order to get the kind of um, network graphs off the off the ground, you have to do a little bit of pre-processing on the data to specify some things. So she's going to take, she does, I think, pretty much the exact same thing for all three of those data sets she just built. So uh, looking here at the totals data set first, she's going to do some, um, add some new columns in. So the first one is uh, from equal census. So that's basically just going to uh, uh, give us a column that says census all the way down. Uh, two is she's going to take, uh, she's going to use this if else, you could have used case when, it doesn't matter really. Uh, she uses if else, she says if the ethnicity, so in the ethnicity column, if it says total population, then we're going to call it census. And if it's not total population, then we're going to use paste O, which paste uh, zero is basically pasting without any separations. So she's saying paste O census dot, and then she's going to say it's going to be like census dot Kenyans or census dot non Kenyans with the idea that she wants to remove uh, any of the uh, blank spaces within that ethnicity column. So if it's a, if it's a two word ethnicity, she's just going to compress that together. Yeah. So like non Kenyans here would become, get, get, just get rid of that space there. It'll be census dot non Kenyans. Yeah. Right. Um, and then she creates a final column called name uh, where again, she's looking at with the if else, the ethnicity column. And she's saying anytime it says non Kenyans, let's call it non hyphens Kenyans. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Just call it NA. And so she does that for the totals data set. So we can get a look here. So you can see the um, the name column there is, is NA anytime it's uh, non anytime it's not non Kenyan double negative. <laughs> um, the from is is going to be census all the way down. Uh, and then the two is going to have our um, census dot whatever, as long as it's not total population. Yep. Um, and she's going to apply a similar type of um, uh, actions to all three of uh, the other two data sets that we, we parsed out with mm -hmm. the slice. Yeah. I think this is pretty much the same. She has a little bit of um, rejects expression there where the, the string remove all in the ethnicity column is saying that she wants to remove anything that's not alphanumeric. There's a few... Um, as there usually is when you, you get these data sets, uh, like you said, it might've come from a PDF or something. So there's like the slash N, which would be putting things on two separate lines. Um, so she just wanted to, yeah, getting rid of some of those slash marks and stuff like that. So that rejects expression is saying, uh, retain anything um, or, or remove anything that is not an alphanumeric value. Yeah, so it's kind of like a double negative again, where yeah. in this case yeah. you want to be keeping only the um, alphanumeric values. Uh, yeah, and, correct. And, and you can see here too, with the from in this earlier one, it's census. Well, now yep. it's from and it's census.kenians. And it's creating um, basically, for, for plotting purposes, like tiers of information, where correct. this higher level is census information. This next is census.kenians. So information about the census.kenians data yeah. set, so you can create more information around the that. 
the the network graphs are attempting to identify relationships between groups and so she is essentially creating the subgroupings within her data set that she's going to want to connect mm -hmm. <clears throat> so then we have these this from and to there that is indicating from census.kenyans or census.kenyans dot whatever mm. uh, to census.kenyans more information about the ethnicity or more information about the subgroup yeah um, and then uh, name is now going to be assigned, but only if subgroup is blank and the total population is greater than 250,000. Um, and so this is important for later on in the plotting so that you don't have too many labels appear yeah. in, in your in your plot here, because otherwise it's going to try to label each individual dot. And that's going to be a lot of information. What, yeah. what we want to do here is label the, the circles that have a large percentage of the population, which in this case, it was drawn at 250,000. Right. So we've got that. Same idea for non-Kenyans, where census.non-Kenyans, as opposed to census.Kenyans, is used. Um, but she doesn't want to have a label for any specific group that is non-Kenyan. So as you can see here, here there's a name. Here there is no name column, so there it won't uh, do that in the plot. So, but once again, same same concept, removing any um, uh, alpha, alpha, alphanumeric characters. So now we're going to combine all that data. The da total's full, Kenyan's full, non-Kenyan's full, into a single data set. Yeah. So she does this by taking total's full, piping it into bind rows, and adding Kenyan's full and non-Kenyan's full. I mean, you could also I, do it like this. Yeah, that's right. And I am curious about... The same. I am curious about, and maybe there wasn't a way you can do this. I guess I'd have to look at the original data set. She broke out the three data sets and did all that manipulation. And I'm curious if in the original data set where those three data sets were pulled from, if there was a way to do this all in one swoop where the if else passed multiple conditions. Like if it's this, this, and this, then I want it to say census.kenyans. If it's this, this, and this, say census.kenyans. But I feel like there's mm. there's a lot more um, conditions you have to apply. There would be, yeah, probably two or three conditions that yeah. you'd have to get you there, I would think. In, in this way, I think it's, I mean, I do this sometimes too, where yeah. information isn't necessarily like, it, there's a structure to the data set, but that information isn't captured in yes. the data itself and, and therefore you need to kind of break it up into multiple data yeah. frames to then do your manipulations because yeah. you know that then this data frame only contains this sort of information so you don't have to and there's no way to actually pass that information in it's like you don't want it, that information in the data frame you only want the impact yes um, yeah, so yeah when i've when i've created tables for uh for reports and whatnot i've had to do that in the past yeah it's, yeah yeah it's pretty obnoxious i think <laughs> uh, um, so then we're going to take this full DF. We're going to filter any cases where ethnicity is not equal to total population. And this is going to give us our edges data set. So this is the, um, the basically drawing the, t the connections between the, the populations, um, like the subset populations. So for example, let's should just do head. So it's saying we're going to draw a line from census to census.kenyans, census to census.nonkenyans. So it's just making those connections for the to tell the plot what to do. Yep. And then the vertices are like the nodes themselves. And so we're going to take the full DF. We're going to keep the select total and uh, or the two uh, total and name, and we're going to rename them. So two is going to become name total is going to become size and name is going to become short name so that's kind of confusing because name kind of shows up twice but what eh, mm. what ends up happening is we now have this just gotta head we have name here which lines up with our edges uh data set here the size and the short name and so if it's not an a the short name will appear in, in our plots. Mm -hmm. But now we have to <clears throat> convert this data frame information into something that our uh, um, line plot or um, network software can understand. And this is through the, the function graph from data frame. 
where you define the edges you want to be using and the vertices that you expect it to be using. And now you've got this um, my graph or I graph object here, which contains, okay, census is connected to census.kenyans, census non-kenyans, census not stated. Census.kenyans is related to census.kenyans. Um, so it's just like defining the connections and edges yeah. between everything. All the little permutations within the yep. plot. And this is from the uh, iGraph uh, package. So now we're gonna go and create our GG graph, which is the, the, the circle plot that we made. And so this is the actual image that gets generated and you use the GG graph uh, package for that. So we're gonna GG graph, we're gonna take this new object that we generated. Okay, okay, the layout that we're gonna use is circle pack, which is that circle plot that we saw. The, the weight, so the weight, so the, the size of the nodes is gonna be based on size, which is the population that we have here. And now we're gonna go through and start defining uh, it take ggraph makes it nice because it makes it behave more like a ggplot in in the way that we're used to. So it starts at allowing you to start defining features about this in in a very ggplot esque way. Um, so you're going to geom node circle, which is saying, okay, I'm going to add circles to this, and we're going to fill them. So we're going to set the aesthetic so that the fill is going to be a factor of depth, the same as color. And so for uh, a network plot, depth is how far into the node or in, into the connections it is from like the main census. So think of this as like every census dot blank dot blank is another factor of depth that we've got going on here. Next, the geom node label. We're gonna be labeling our nodes. And we're gonna use the field short name, but if you remember, there were a lot of NAs because we only wanted to label a couple of our nodes there. We're going to set the size to be five, the fill to be based on this color, uh, the color of the, the labels to be this, and the family, um, so the font that's going to be used is inter-medium. Then we get into the standard ggplot nomenclature that we're all used to. So scale fill manual, so we're going to define how we want the fill to behave. So the values are 0, 1, 2, 3, which are the depth. We're going to color them based on these, these uh, hex codes here. Same with the coloring, the labels. So we have our title, the subtitle, caption. I'm assuming she went through and generated this information, such as uh, the, ethnic, the percentage of the ethnicity groups and whatnot. She went through and manually did that separately to, to be able to, to put that information in there. We're going to set the theme to be void so that it has no other um, information out there that we don't care about or not information, um, like lines and in, in, in plots and whatnot. Uh, we're going to use additional theming where we're going to get rid of the legend because it doesn't provide additional information. We're going to set the plot background to be uh, a fill of BA, 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 and a color of BA, BA, BA. Plot title, we're going to adjust it to the middle using element text, the size of 19, so that's going to be the size. Color, family, plot subtitle, also center it, but it's going to be slightly smaller text. Um, and we're going to have some margins around there so that it um, has some distance away from the title, similarly with caption. So right, we're going to run that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Because, because uh, this is a slightly ran, like the, the actual plot itself is somewhat randomly generated, ours looks different from hers. That doesn't mean the data contained in it is separate. It's just right. the placement of the circles is going to be different. In random, yeah, on, on hers... On hers, the non-Kenyans were in the upper right. Um, yeah, unless you set the seed, you won't get the same. Which we didn't. Yeah. And it'll, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But that's yeah. pretty cool, though. So here we go. And so, uh, once again, we thought it was a really cool way to show the relations between uh, the different um, ethnicities, subgroups, and showing how that all worked. Uh, you can definitely get uh, a, like a high level view. This is one of the plots where you're not going to be necessarily getting values from them. Like this isn't the, the, a plot that's for that. For this, it's to give you a, a visual idea of the relationships and how, how things kind of relate to one another. If you wanted to actually get values and like be able to compare like in, yeah. in here, the Kikuyu and the Kalenjin and the Luya popular, like here the, the populations don't look that different. In fact, to me, the Luya I, 
I feel like the circle, the two yeah the looks larger than these Kal Kalenjin and Luya look larger than Kikuya. I think mainly because they have plots with inside them. They have, they have uh, uh, circles with inside them. And so visually, I feel like it does kind of like make me, when I look at it, it's like, oh yeah, those are, those have to be bigger. Despite the fact that Kikuya makes up 17%, it's the largest mm -hmm. ethnic group. So I think that is an interesting, so, it, so it's, like it's not a mind when, when you're looking at these sorts of plots. It's a, great plot again we, we get into those the discussion of art versus like inference and sometimes plots like this they look really uh pretty and and um they tell a story for a reader who's maybe like you know going through an article or something like that uh, if you're trying to make actual inference it's these these are a, always at least for me they've always been a lot more challenging because i'm always like gosh I, how much bigger is that or how different is that? I don't know mm -hmm. really what it is, but yeah, yeah. but it's pretty cool. But I yeah. like it. No, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to do. So thank you so much for letting us go through your code there and explain how all this works, Natalie. Um, we had a, a great time going through it. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. All right. So now we're going to move on to a project. So we're going to, so the last several weeks in Tidy X here, we've been focused a little bit on hockey in excitement for a, the uh, Seattle Kraken, um, as well as uh, start of the, the season. Start of the season. Yeah. So we have been going through and doing different analyses um, on on NHL data. And so this week is no different. So, yeah. Pat, you want to kind of explain? How yeah. Or, well, I, yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. I, uh, we, we did kind of have a, um, uh, the initial kind of thought was we'll, we'll make an exact kind of circle plot like that for salaries of position groups within the NHL. And, um, and then, slowly I started scraping data and that totally diffused into me doing something completely different. <laughs> uh, Cause yeah, let's go. I kind of want to know. So, yeah. A, as it happens. So um, we'll, we'll go through a little bit here of, of kind of what we did and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, we load in the, the usual suspects. Uh, I didn't use plotly in this. So um, let's mix that. <laughs> yeah. We didn't need that, uh, but we did need tidy verse in our vest. So wait, we're doing web scraping again. <laughs> We're yeah yeah <laughs> we're we're pretty much I think when it, with with most of these sports things I feel like we always have to start out web scraping because we have to get data we have to get our data um, in and we don't want to just like uh, so we want to give attribution yeah so initial the initial thought was well let's look at uh, uh, spending across position groups for teams. Um, with within the 2021 season. So I pull the URLs for the skaters, the goaltenders and the salaries. And um, we're going to scrape those. This is the same type of scraping that we did last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you can feel free to go through that. There's no need to kind of plow through this. Basically, we take the HTML that we've uh, we've pulled. We want the table. We're going to um, set the names from one to the last column in the table because the way that these tables get pulled they have kind of like overlapping information they have they have column headers that are essentially uh, like a meta column header and then a uh, uh, kind of a micro column header below that so um we just set the names as a, a a numeric value so that we can pull the columns that we want and then we give them names later on and for this all we needed was players age team and uh, position um, and then we filter out because of the repeatedness of the columns as you go through their data we filter out anything that says player we do the exact same thing for goaltenders yeah literally and, the same except now they didn't because we knew that they were goalies yes they, they didn't have the position field in there so we add that in at the very so, end yes that's that's correct yeah and then, and then uh, we, we put the players table together. So that's all, all of our players in the NHL for the 2021 season. And then we're going to do something else here for uh, salaries. So salaries is a different table. Um, we, we take that URL and uh, same type of thing. We're going to, we're going to take that HTML. We want the table. Um, I do a little renaming of the columns. I want to call uh, cap hit 
cap underscore hit. I get rid of the, you know, uh, player. I don't think I needed that. I don't think there was a player name column. I don't know why that's there. Um, no, there would be a player name. Uh, oh yes, that's right. It's player. It's not, it's not team salaries. That's right. I, I get rid of the player name. Cause all I care about is how much, uh, the, uh, or I get rid of the player name within the player column because it's repeated. That's what mm-hmm. it was. Um, and then I do a little mutation here where I want to make sure that the salaries as they're presented on their website are in comma values. So like 4 million would be four comma zero, zero, zero comma zero, zero, zero. I want to make sure that that gets out of there. And I do the same for the cap hit column. So yeah. that gives us a salary data set. Yeah. Another, that we, another method you can do that is using the read R parse number. Oh yeah. Function. I always forget about that one. Um, do that. Yeah, there we go. Parse number, that's what it is. Yeah, so this is just and, another way to do it. Yeah, that's a good one. I, did you need to put read R there since we have tidyverse? Uh, I guess not. I just like, um, occasionally I like just make sure I attribute. To the right package, the right yeah. package. Um, we shouldn't have to worry about that in this case. But... Uh, I think you need one more. There we go. There we go. So this so should be the same. Table. Yeah, there, there's, yeah. There's no difference between what we did. It's just. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I always forget about that, but. Actually, um, uh, during uh, an earlier episode, one of our, our our viewers commented that we should use this one. So thank you. So th- there you go. We got called out, called out to the mat. Yeah. Um, so we, we do a little bit of a uh, uh, um, joining here where we take the salary table the anti join was just because i wanted to see if there were any non-matches there's like 50 some non-matches um i don't know what that's about i I don't know how well kept the salary data is on hockeyreference.com there's certainly other websites like spotrack and things like that where you can get reasonable um salary data i i simply uh it just was it became a time thing where I, i couldn't um uh i didn't want to deal with pl- like name matching and, and stuff like that yeah yeah they just like they have just like oh they flipped like, some names they have a, a weird differences here but yeah eh. it, it is what it is for 53 players are any of them high price players let's see uh, those are like league minimums oh there's some joshua morrissey was on what eight million is that what it says yeah eight comma zero 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 yeah eight, eight million so he was a big time for the yeah, Winnipeg it's the, Jets. It's the order that they drop them in. Yeah. So first name, last name. That's good to know. Maybe next right. time next I'll time. write a function that can flip the names so that everybody's yeah. always going Not the same like way. Standardized name or something like that. Yeah. All right. Whatever. All right. So we do a little bit of uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, first thing is just looking at the percent of spending across position groups. Uh, if anyone's watching who's a hockey fan, I didn't quite know what to make of the forwards. I, I, I'm assuming there, you know, there was like 20 forwards. I'm assuming mostly someone who's considered a forward is partitioned into a left or right wing. I, I, I'm not really sure. Um, so maybe someone knows what that's about. Um, it's not in historic data, but uh, all of the historic data, but it was there for this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to look at like a little bit of the distribution of spending. So obviously there's a whole bunch of players making uh, a whole little, I think the league minimum was around set, uh, 700,000 or something like that. Maybe, maybe less than 350,000. Um, and then obviously there's some, um, some fortunate person making over 15, 15, 15 million, million this season. year. I don't, I don't know who that is, but hey friend. <laughs> let's be friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, other ways of just kind of looking at the, um, uh, looking at the spending here. Um, I actually put the salaries, I think on a log scale for yep. this one. So we, yep, there we go. So uh, everybody is pretty much the, the median spending is pretty similar across position groups. I th- there is a salary cap in hockey, so that probably influences some of how teams spend money. I do think it is interesting that there's pretty good parity across the position groups. Obviously, if you did this for like football or something, um, this this wouldn't hold. You would see some position groups making substantially more than others. You know, quarterback comes to mind. <laughs> so, um, nah, yeah. Nah. So uh, let's see another way of uh, that. I kind of that was that one. Okay, yeah. 
uh, then we did GG uh, Ridge's plot. And yeah. I think this one is a fun one because it really shows the bimodal nature of spending across the position groups where you see that um, there's a concentration of players that are making kind of like league minimum ish contract deals up to about a million dollars. Um, and, you know, that makes up a, a majority of the players on the team. And then there's nobody in, you know, very few in the middle ground. And then there's a whole bunch of players that are making um, league maximum contracts for their position. So it really is kind of these two camel humps really show us that you're, you're either a, um, there's the have and the have nots in the NHL, I guess we could yeah. say. There's, yeah. there's the uh, bench and there's, or the, the, yeah or, or maybe it's like rookies versus yeah it I could mean, be I, yeah I don't, I, I don't know if rookie contracts are like uh ceiling or capped and spend, <laughs> capped yeah exactly if there's a ceiling on what they better term <laughs> yeah I, i'm not sure um so that that was kind of so instead of then going through and making the circle graph i was like geez what is the cost of a win like how much does it cost to um to buy a, a, an extra win I wanted to do this with several years of data and unfortunately um, hockey reference only stores salary information for the most recent year. So I used a way back machine to try and find other historic years. And the only data set in the way back machine that I could find a full data set for was the 2014, 2015 season. So that's what we go ahead and uh, we use in so, this. Yeah, we're pulling in the data analysis. here. Um, yeah, we, so, we did this, something similar to this. I mean, it's, it's the same sort of process for each year. We're going to yeah. go across each year. So map DFRs from per. It's going to mm -hmm. go across each one of them and then attempt to uh, collapse all of the outputs into a single data frame for us. So it's going to be going across each year. So NHL 2014, 2015, uh, to eight, all the way to up to 18. Read the web page get the table nodes and generate a data frame for us that has player age team position salary uh no just those things i think yeah we this is just going to be skaters and goalies to stay yeah and the season that they played in and, and the season the that they played in. same thing for goalies looping yep. across every year um reading in the web page getting the table converting into a data frame keeping the season keeping player age team and position so exactly it's basically what we did earlier but this time L looped across, over yeah looping over multiple years mm -hmm. so then we're going to bind it together so now we have skater and goalie stats from yeah. 2014 all the way up to 2018 this, unfortunately this, uh, the salary yeah. information we only are able to get from yeah. 2015 is a complete ish data set so I put that into a CSV, which we can put on GitHub. Yeah, yeah. But uh, read CSV using this file.choose, which um, I typically don't use because I'm typically coding um, more in a batch type mode. So it, not interactively. This is called interactive programming, where you're actively going through and picking things to run. Non-interactive non kind of means computer go and execute each line of my script without me giving, it, yeah. giving input. But, I think we can set it to um, read the CSV directly from the the GitHub repo once the data is put in yeah. there. But the file.choose is kind of cool because it creates this pop-up here. So yep. I'm able to go through and actually pick the file that I want to be reading in. And then it'll go through and it read it in for me. So now we've got salary. I'm going to take a quick head of that. So we've got the player, team, salary, cap, hit, season for the 2015 year. So we're going to do take the players. We're going to do an inner join on player, team, and season. And so now we have a head. So we've got player, team, age, team, position, season, salary, cap hit. Uh, then, then here you do some cleanup. So oh, that's, that's left yeah. over from, from some playing around earlier. So player salaries, we're going to group by team. We're going to get the total spending for that team by summing up the, the salaries that they have there. Uh, and then there's a bunch of mutates here to clean up all the, the names into mm -hmm. a standardized. So ANA into Anaheim Ducks, ARI and Arizona Coyotes. So we end up with this team spending. Oh, that's also from... That was from something else. <laughs> look, look, looking at some other stuff. Um, so yeah, we've got 
the team, the total spending they have, and the nicer full name of the team. Mm -hmm. So here it looks like you're getting the wins for each team from the 2015 season, which Correct. is also what we did last week. Yep. 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 So load in the, uh, the URL or read the HTML, get the table, get the first two tables that we mm -hmm. care about here, bind them together, uh, convert to a data frame, select the, the fields that we care about keeping, filter out the places where team is, def is not an actual team, but the division, some conversion into is it a playoff team um, and whatnot. So let's pull that in. Cool. All right, so now we're gonna join everything together. So we're gonna combine the 2015 salary information with the uh, information that we have on each team and their wins and losses. So now we have this big old data frame here. So the Montreal Canadiens won 50 games. They were a playoff team and they spent $63,440,833. Mm -hmm. And we converted that into a nicer spending per millions because that's a large number and it's easier sometimes to work with the smaller numbers. So we're dividing it by a million, so we get spending in millions. So now we're gonna take a quick look at what what's going on with that. So uh, like just at a high level, so we're gonna say, okay, x-axis, is it a playoff team? Yes or no, as you know, we calculated that or um, as we read in the data, and we're gonna look at total spending and we're gonna use a box plot to compare the two. Um, and we're gonna then do scale y continuous, scales comma, so that the scales look nicer. So at a high level, playoff team, true or false? So it looks like if you spend more, you're going to go to the playoffs. So spend <laughs> you a lot of money. Better players, yeah. <laughs> spend mm -hmm. all the money you have, and you'll go to the playoffs, right? That's that's the lesson to learn here. That's a, it's <laughs> causal. Ish, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. Do you want to take us through... Yeah. So the, the model um, that you've created now, you explained it so well. Yeah. So now I said, uh, I thought, well, let's go ahead and try and figure out um, how much spending goes into winning. Uh, I, there was an episode that we did on Himalayan climbers and we did a whole bunch on logistic regression. And um, I think it's like episode 22 or something. We can, we can link to it. Uh, that would be a good one if you're interested more in logistic regression. We went really deep into that. Um, and one of the things that we did, which is common in logistic regression, is that your dependent variable is binary. It's a one or a zero. Um, and that's fine. But if you look at the data set that we have, we have binary data. We have wins and losses. We have successes and failures. Um, but we don't have game by game data. What we have is aggregated data at a season level. So aggregated spending and aggregated wins and aggregated losses. And so what you can do in logistic regression is if the data is binary, but the data is not stored in a binary way, meaning rows of ones and zeros. Uh, I believe if I recall, it's called the Wilkinson Rogers uh, formula uh, to logistic regression, where we actually make the dependent variable a matrix instead of a vector of ones and zeros. Now it's a matrix of successes and failures. So I just create that by doing a little uh, column bind, C bind of the wins and losses columns from our actual data set. And if we only had wins and games played, we could do wins, comma, games played minus losses, right? That would be the uh, other type of um, uh uh, or games played minus wins, right? That would give us our losses. Either way, you want to have in the left part of the uh, uh, data set, the successes and in the right part, the failures. And we're going to um, forecast that based on spending per millions. And it's, it's a binomial uh, uh, model, uh, binomial logistic regression. And then we get a summary of our data points or summary of our uh, coefficients in log odds. And so what we can do with this is make some forecasts on the expected wins based on spending. So on average in 2015, teams spent just a, a little over $53 million. And so we can take that mean value and we can plop it into the predict function. When we type, when we use type equals response, uh, what we're telling predict is give us the actual probability. So if we just ran that, the response is going to be that 
on average, a team spending the mean amount in 2015 would have won about 57% of their games. So I just multiply that by 82, which is the total number of games played, to estimate out that a team wins around 47 games, spending the mean value. Um, so then my idea was, well, what if we spent $10 million more? How many more wins would we get? So I used the exact same um, uh, function above, and I just add an extra 10 million, and now we get about 43 extra wins, which ends up to be about uh, six. 53. Uh, 53, sorry. Yeah, why did I, I say <laughs> uh, It ends up to be about six extra wins uh, for 10 million more dollars. You know, it seems uh, like a good, good comparison. Seems like a good value. Um, the I mean, if you looked at those like contracts, I think Sid, Sidney Crosby or Hen Henrik Lundqvist is like around 10 million. So you're, you're probably buying some sort of stud. So this gets us into like talking about, we're thinking about what's the value of a player? What's the value of spending at certain position groups? Where can you find more value? Um, this is only one year's worth of data. So it's not great. I, I'm kind of bummed I couldn't get more we'll see if uh, we years. Can find more information. Maybe, maybe we can. We can. When I've done this with baseball, it comes out clearer when you you know when you have eight nine ten years worth of data you get an idea on what spending leads you to but we can we can look at the results by uh, i created this range here which is the from is the minimum spending max is the max spending and i did it in 10 million dollar sequences so length out 10 and i'm going to make the prediction over that spending range and the difference function here is just saying, what's the difference from one value in that vector to the next? So it's about 3.84% increase per $10 million extra spent. And so we can plot the relationship between spending and win percentage. And then what we can do is we could take this information and feed the predictions from that 2015 season back into the data set. So we do that here by adding this column pred. And so now we're gonna find the number of games won relative to the predicted number of games won based on a team's uh, overall spending. So we do that here. This I use base, base R. Base R, nobody hate me for it, please. I, I kind of like base R sometimes. It's, it's, it's convenient sometimes. Yeah, it, it's just like there. X axis is easy. the predictions, Y axis is the wins. It's, the um, dot type the dot is type going to be is, circle filled black. The X label is predicted wins. Y label is season wins. Yeah. So we get that. And then, and, and then I put a, a line of equality, which is a line with an intercept of zero and a slope of one. So an exact prediction would fall directly on that line. For example, the team that's uh, all the way down there at the bottom, probably a team that spent the least, that team right there. You can see that with this one year of data, the predicted wins from spending overestimates the season wins. That's why the points are below the line of uh, equality. Um, and so that then should probably make us ask more questions. First obvious question is need more data. What else? Uh, <laughs> second, second obvious question is, where are teams spending their money in terms of position groups? Are some positions more valuable than others? Um, third obvious question is just because you sink a whole bunch of money into a player, if he gets hurt and doesn't play or misses time, um, that becomes a problem because now you have a lot of money that's not contributing to actual winning. Mm -hmm. And then I think the third question probably becomes what do you get for your money in terms of the interaction between the players on the ice? Like if I take the 20 million or the $15 million I was going to spend to get the Sidney Crosby superstar, but I instead invested it in, you know, maybe two players, both at the price of $65 million who are high value players. Can I get both of those players on the ice at the same time? And like two right be, wings. Spending exactly. $15 million on both of them is not going to get you a value. Ex exactly. So it's going to be the interaction between those players and how they work together and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was a little bit on logistic regression. Um, 
when you're passing a matrix as the dependent variable versus a, uh, a vector. Yep, and a little bit of base R, a little bit and of- A little bit of base R, little and, little and a little bit of web scraping, yeah. and a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I think with that, we are going to end the cast now that we've gone through all our code. So uh, as always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is uh, Patrick Ward. And you can find me on Twitter at, I almost said my name is my Twitter handle <laughs> at OSP. That's my name. That's how people know. Me. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And you can find the both of us, the actual screencast on Twitter at, at tidy underscore explained. You can email us tidy.explained at gmail.com. You can comment at the bottom on the YouTube, uh, or you can uh, tweet us and ask us questions there as well, or do all of the above above. at the same time, either way. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, and uh, keep on exploring your world.